This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. The uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning is and this is directly from Meltzer's report. He says here's an interesting stat, courtesy of MoronBall.com. In 2014, which is the year we're coming off of here, there were 52 Raws. And out of those 52 Raws in the TV main event, only 18 ended with a clean finish. What makes that number scarier is a lot of those Raws put an interview segment in the main event position. And on those shows, the main event, quote unquote, isn't even a match with top guys. And those match matches almost always have finishes. So when you've got a real main event, the percentage is really even lower than that. During one 11 week period earlier in the year, there was only one clean finish in the final match on raw later in the year. They had an eight week streak without a clean finish. This feels like a departure from what the business was built on. We're not paying off and honoring stipulations and oh yeah, we're also not doing clean finishes. As an agent, were you guys ever discussing? Did you find yourself discussing whether or not you had do, done too many uh, screw job finishes, and, and 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 maybe you needed to get back to the basics? Well, we had we all had opinions about what we were doing wrong. Um, I've never been a proponent of putting your top guys who are in an angle on TV in a match and beating each other. If I'm going to give it to you for free and you can sit in your living room and do it, why are you going to spend 300 bucks to take your family and go see it happen live? Right. That's the whole difference in a house show and television. You get however many matches there are, eight. Let's just say there are eight. You get eight short stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And at the end of each match, there is a conclusion. Television, especially in the three-hour watching adventure age, if I'm going to sit there for three hours and watch a show and see the same talent probably twice before you got to the main event, when those matches were put in the main event slot, which is last on the show, and then you don't get a finish anyway, that's a long time to sit there and have no satisfaction. Then I think it was discovered that no matter what you do, that last 45 minutes or so, people are turning off, going to bed. They got to get up, go to school, go to work, all that stuff. So they were putting some of the less than top, top stuff on last. Well, people were DVR in it. Yeah. You know, so... You know, there were a lot of situations where I felt there's a lot of talent in that locker room that are middle guys all the way down to underneath guys, but that had talent and could go out and give you an interesting competitive match, uh, you know, and keep some fresh faces on that show and keep your top, top guys and the top, top angles in reserve for the, that's what your pay-per-views were for to get satisfied on uh, that angle that had been built. There was a time, Conrad, where we were doing 20, 22 pay-per-views a year. Yeah. That meant you had to finish your pay-per-view in some instances now, start an angle, build an angle, and blow another angle off in three weeks. Now, you're a smart guy, obviously. A lot. lot smarter than a lot smarter than I am. Tell me how you do that. Well, not very well. You know what you end up doing? Blowing through all your matchups. Yeah. So all those dream matches that you had, and I know we're getting a little bit off the subject here, but I think it's all relative. That, yeah. That pe- that people need to understand. You know, to to finish a pay per view with whatever you know, all the stories you wanted to button up and tie up and, and finish up to start to finish with that pay-per-view and three weeks later, having to have start angles, 
built angles and blown them off three weeks or sometimes two weeks. You have no idea how difficult that is. And I would venture to say impossible. The, uh, the business has changed and evolved a lot since you've been in it. I mean, once upon a time, it was all about just selling, you know, tickets to the arena. So you, you know, you would only have promos and enhancement matches on TV and you'd have your competitive matches at the live shows. And then of course, when, you know, pay-per-view becomes a thing, it becomes, well, now we're selling pay-per-views and tickets, but if there was TV, like back in the day, Bruce used to say the goal was never to have a clean finish on Saturday night's main event. It was to tease, uh, that matchup and let people have a, a glimpse of it. And then they had to come out to the arena if they wanted to see it, but that evolved, I feel like. And I think a lot of that is because of nitro. I think that everybody sort of had to up their game a little bit when Monday night raw started, but nitro certainly took it to another level. And I think the expectation from fans changed in time as well. And I do think that, you know, not having clean finishes in your main event, if if it's never a clean finish, it becomes very predictable. And Eric Bischoff thinks that the one critical thing to making wrestling exciting is the unpredictability. But if they know, well, it's going to be interference or it's going to be a DQ or it's going to be a count out. If it's not going to be a, a quote unquote clean in the middle finish, that becomes rather formulaic as well. Does it not? Of course it does. And sometimes, you know what the shocker is? Put a guy against the main event guy, which appears on the surface to be an enhancement match. Right. But guess what? The other guy goes over. Yeah. He's not involved in the guy's angle whatsoever. He was put out there as a tackling dummy. That's what you would think you're looking at as you watch that. And, hey, there may be some people that go, well, that's just a you know, steamroll this guy because of positioning, not because of talent, not because of ability, but just because of where they're positioned. He's going to steamroll this guy. I'm not going to watch this. And if he clicks off and he hears the next day at work that the other guy won, wouldn't that be something you would, you would go, oh, God, why did I? It was just another 10 minutes. Why didn't I stay up and watch that? Sure. You know, you can restructure your audience that way. And, you know, it, I'm not saying you shouldn't have top guys against top guys in the main event. I'm just saying don't have that top guy who in 30 days or however many days it is, is wrestling him at the, at this pay per view? Let's don't give it away for free because I've seen it three times, and now I would like you to pay fifty five dollars to see it again, prior to the network, when you were paying pay per view prices. That's all I'm saying. Put another guy that's in that spot with two top guys, and then let them go and have a winner and have a loser. That's all. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future clips that we upload. We hope we made you laugh, and we hope we can save you some money right now at SaveWithConrad.com.